In this section we're going to be talking about systems of linear equations in two variables and then a little bit later on we're going to work some problem solving um, things which are basically just application problems. So if we look at um, kind of the basis of this, let's start out with kind of reviewing something that we've already done. First of all, we have this problem that says 4x minus 3y equals 9, and we want to know what is this? Well, if you'll remember back from previous things that we've done, this is really just a line. And we could graph this if we could get it into the proper form. And that proper form would be starting um, solving for y, basically, so that we had it in the form of y equals mx plus b. So in order to solve this for y, we'd have to move our 4x to the right. So we'd have negative 3y equals negative 4x plus 9. And then if we divided both sides by negative 3 to get y alone, we'd have y equals 4 thirds x minus 3. Now we can read off our y-intercept and also our slope. So when if I wanted to graph this to see what it looks like, the y-intercept would be at negative 3, so let's say 1, 2, 3 would be down here. There's my y-intercept, and the, the slope tells me to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, 2, 3. So the slope would put me at here for my next point. And then, of course, I could draw the line between those two points. So we already know how to graph a line. Well, here we have two of these put together. So if one of them is just a line, then two of them is just two lines. So let's graph these and see uh, what it looks like. I'm trying to move it up a little bit, that's not good. So let's start out with our first one, which was 2x plus 3y equals 9, and let's get it into graphing form. So if we subtract 2x from both sides, we have 3y equals negative 2x plus 9, and then dividing both sides by 3, we would have y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 3. So if I were going to graph this on my graph here, I would start at the y-intercept of 3, and then I would have to go down 2 and over 3 for the slope. Now we could also go rise 2 in the opposite direction, 3, if we wanted to get um, another point on there. But then I would draw the line between those points. Now for the next line, that negative 5x minus 3y equals 0, let's go ahead and solve that one for y so we can graph it too. So if I move the negative 5x to the right, we have negative 3y equals positive 5x. And then dividing everything by negative 3, we get y equals negative 5 thirds x. So here again, we can graph this. We have a 0, there's nothing here for the y-intercept, so that would be at 0, 0. And then to find another point on there, we'd have to rise the negative 5 and run 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3 would put me right here. Or I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and back 3. So my line would look something like this. Oops. Kind of got off track there a little bit. Well, we notice from graphing both of these lines that they both had this single point in common. This is where both of those lines meet and intersect. So um, whenever we're looking for that, we say, okay, this point of negative 3, 5 is an x and a y value for both the first equation and the second equation. And actually, it's the only point that they share in common, which means that it is a solution to both of these equations. That's what we're doing when we solve simultaneous equations. We're trying to find the solution, or the x and y value that they have in common. Now, we're going to practice with some of this with some other problems.